Hi there, and welcome to another video of Copycat with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how we're going to recreate this really cool generative art piece from Tyler Hobbs. Tyler Hobbs is one of my favorite artists that I've discovered lately, and I came upon this really impressive piece from him called Untitled Cityscape. And I thought it'd be really good to try and recreate something similar to this inside of Cables. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to make the main loop up. And this could go a bit quick today because there's a lot to do and cover. And now I'm going to grab the orthogonal up. That's because I don't want any perspective. And now I'm going to grab the clear color up because I want to set the background. So I'm going to set these values to um, 1, 0, 0.91 and 0 0.77. Okay. So now that's the background there. I'm now going to grab a sequence op. And from here, I'm then going to make a basic material. And what I want to do is I want to draw a lot of rectangles from left to right and change their height to get a similar look. Now for this, we're going to use the mesh instance op. So I'm going to go to the basic material, pull it out and grab a trigger once op. I then want to grab the rectangle mesh. And I'm going to get that geometry output here and plug it in there. So I'm now going to put the width on 0 0.02 and the height on, well, let's just do one for now. So now I want to go from left to right with a lot of rectangles. So the new version of our array up here replaces the old array up and a continuous number array up. So on this mode number, all the contents of the array become this. If I put it on the one, two, three, four mode, then we get the same behavior as the continuous number array up, which is the one I want right now. So I'm gonna grab a value up, and this is gonna determine our array length. Let's put this on 800 for now. Lower, let's put it on 50. So we've also got a slightly new and improved up, the array math up. The old one used to do a math operation on two arrays. We've renamed it now, so array math, does a mathematical function on one single array, an array math array performs on two different arrays. So we want this one. So I'm gonna get the array length and we're gonna divide all the contents of the array by its length. And this gives us, sorry, let's pick divide. And now we're gonna get normalized coordinates between zero and one. Okay, let's now grab an array pack free op for the X, Y, Z components. I'm going to plug that here. I'm going to plug that here. Now let's go here, grab a trigger extender, because I just want to keep my patch a little bit tidy. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to plug that in there. Move this over here. Plug this into the positions array. And voila, we get this. So because the value is from 0 to 1, it's going from left to right, bottom to top, and to the back. To the back, we're not going to see, because orthogonal is uh, fixing that. So I want everything to go from left to right. So we look at the X component and we just grab the array math up. We first of all know that our values are between zero and one. So we subtract 0 0.5. So we go here, subtract, and now this is the center. We grab another array math up and we're gonna do multiply. And then by increasing this number here, as you can see, we go from left to right. I'll put it on four. Okay, so now I wanna get something similar to this here. So I'm gonna use first of all array sin. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to grab the array sin op. And now let's put the numbers on this. This is what I came up with, 3.89, 15.24. So there we get like this nice sign. And now I'm going to crank the amplitude to 6.7, which is really high. Now I'm going to go here, and I'm going to grab the array floor up. And it's going to make them into whole numbers. So I'm going to copy these two put them over here. I'm going to get the array output and plug it in there. And this is now going to get different values. I'm going to put the phase on 4.18, frequency on 20, 5.78, and the amplitude on 3.09. So now I want to multiply these two arrays together. So I go here and I grab the array math array up and I plug in both of these. And now I'm going to put this on multiply. And now I'm just going to pull this down I'm going to grab a single array math op, and I'm going to multiply this all by a really small number. So I'm going to go here, put it on multiply, I'm going to just turn this up to say 0 0.06. Okay, as you can see, we're getting something a little bit similar to this now. 
Okay, so the last thing I want to do is move it down. But first, let's put this rectangle height, say, on four. And you get this. And now I'm going to go here, I'm going to say array math. Let's just pull this down, get a little bit more space. I'm going to subtract because I just want to move everything down. I'm going to say 1.5. Okay, so this is looking a little bit similar now. So there's two points I want to address here. Um, in the original picture, it's very dense and very full with a lot of fine granular detail. So first of all, let's go to basic material and let's get the color correct. So I'm going to put it on 0 0.09, 0 0.133, um, 0 0.266. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the array length on, say, a 1,000. And we get this. So if I now go to basic material and turn the opacity down, we get that. Now let's put the array length on, say, 3,000. And now they're kind of like overlapping. So one moment. And great. So the problem we've got is now they're all exactly in the same position. So we need to offset them with a random height. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to grab the random array up. And I'm going to put the values on 0 0.2 and, say, 2. And now what I need to do is I need to get this array and um, put it together with these ones here. So I'm going to grab the array, math array. And I'm going to get the output from this, plug it in there, and then I'm going to subtract. And as you can see, we're now getting something a lot similar to this there. So if we now look at the basic material and we change the opacity, as you can see, what's happening is we've got a lot of rectangles which are kind of overlapping with their width, which gives us really nice, pleasant look. So let's just put this on there. So the amount of points there makes a big difference. So this is 100, this is 1,000. 2,000, 3,000. As you can see, the more that we overlap, the darker that it becomes. Okay, so this is kind of nice. I really enjoy it. I think we need to offset stuff on the x-axis as well. So let's just zoom out, get a little bit of space. It's getting kind of busy around here. Let's just color code some of this. So this is for the, the, the y component. I'm going to make this green. And for x, I'm just going to make it blue. So let's just grab all this, move it over there, tidy this up a little bit this there. Great. So I just want to offset everything by a random number on the x-axis. So I go here and I grab a random array. And I'm going to put these values on a pretty high number, 0 to 10. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the array, math array. And I'm going to add this to there. And as you can see, this goes crazy because everything's just flown off the screen. So this was the little technique that I used, that I, I liked, which kind of gave me the look I want. So I'm just going to modulo this stuff. And I'm just going to pull this down. As you can see, we get a lot of different looks. You could do this with the min maximum values from the random array. This was just a thing that I found that I really liked for getting these like different looks to come out of it. So I'm going to put it on, say, 0 0.07. Okay, so I'm enjoying this. This is looking a lot more like this now. So we've got this like basic look going with the buildings. It's not exactly the same, but uh, I was happy with this because it's inspired by the, the piece of Tyler Hobbs. So now we need to get these um, points on the screen. If we look here, we've got these really nice points. They're round, they've got multiple colors. So let's get started with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna grab the point material up. And then I'm going to grab the point cloud from array up. Okay. But I want to do some different stuff um, with this because otherwise all the points are just going to appear once in the middle of each rectangle, which is not exactly what I want. So let's grab an array pack free up. And let's grab um, the trigger from here. Great. So this is the X array. We plug it into X. And this is the Y array. We plug it into there. And Z just comes from this here. I'm going to plug that in there. And now I'm going to plug this into point cloud from array. And there's something I want to point out here, because this kind of tripped me up last time. As you can see, with the sequence up here, if we press F for flow mode, we're drawing the points first, and then we're drawing uh, the rectangle second. Why is this? Well, they're both 
Um, they're both kind of like on the same position in space. So if I would do this and put it here, as you can see, the points are gone. If I grab this now and pull it back, we get this. So um, now what we need to do is we need to do a little bit of sculpting with the array to get what we want, basically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this down and just keep track of this. This is the output from the, uh, from the Y component. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab an array absolute. Okay, let's pull this stuff up here. And now I'm going to add an array smooth step. Okay, and now I'm going to put in these values minus 0 0.11 and let's put it on say 2.67 okay so i hope you can see where this is going so now i'm just going to make a little bit of screen space because it's getting a little bit busy i know it's full but this is the generative art stuff and i really enjoy the getting your hands dirty so we grab the array math up i'm going to put it on multiply uh, and then we're going to multiply it by a negative number, as you can see here. So we're going to go to, say, minus 2.68. And now it's all flown off the screen. So now we're going to grab another array math up, and we're going to do um, subtract. And as you can see, we're now going to move this up. Okay, this is looking a lot more like what I want. So point material has all these random sizes. So I'm going to turn off random size and put it to zero. And I'm going to put the size on three. Great. So now we need to get the color um, to match up. So let's just oh, go here and let's just kind of put it on white. And what's happening now is we're getting this crazy overlap where some of the circles are over each other. They're in front of a rectangle. They're a little bit behind. And that gives us really nice kind of like blending um, shape here. So you can go in here and you can play around with this stuff. And as you can see, you can get wildly um, different looks out of that. So let's put this back. So this is like pretty close to this here, but this like has this really nice soft warm glow to it that I really like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of post-processing. So I'm going to go up here and now I'm going to add um, a sequence up again. And now I'm going to add a render to texture up. So we want to turn everything down to a texture. So let's just move this up here. Just want to get a little bit more space. So if I click this, I get a preview. So um, I need to turn MSAA on to get rid of any like jaggies and just to get the higher quality. And I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to grab a full screen rectangle. I just want to show you the default. So we plug that in here and then we're back to what we had um, before. So great. Let's just move this up here. So I want to make a kind of bloom basically. So we covered this in earlier tutorials. Let me just get this and move that over here so it's a little bit tidier. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab a image compose up and I'm going to set up a kind of balloon channel here. So now I'm going to grab a draw image up and underneath this I'm now going to add a um, blur. And now what I'm going to do is um, we're going to make another image compose channel. So this is going to be like our blur. I'll show you that in a moment. Let's just do a quick preview. So if I click this and turn it down to say two, ah, sorry. So we need to get this, plug it into image. As you can see, this is our blurry image right there. So this is like going to be our basis for what we're going to do. So I'm going to put it on two. And quick thing, I almost forgot, we don't need to use the viewport size for the blur. It's very expensive. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to put it on 256 by 256. It's really small, but that's more than enough for performance. So I'm going to go here. And what I need to do now is I need to get the original image from here and I need to compose it, uh, make, make, make it uh, fit together with the balloon that we've got here. So I'm going to grab the draw image up. I'm going to do it again. Let's just disconnect this, reconnect this. So slow down for a moment. We have the original image coming in here, and then we blur it. And so I'm going to get the original image. I'm going to plug it in there. And then I'm going to get the blurred image, and I'm going to plug it in here. And now what I need to do is I need to put this, say, on screen mode. And as you can see, we've already got this beautiful warm glow. And we can turn this down with the amount. I'll turn it up. Uh, I liked it around 0 0.69. 
Let's just reference, and we're getting this like glowy look right now. So this is looking really cool. So the thing is, it's taking a lot of um, contrast out of the, the dark blue parts there. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a Luma key up. And this is going to remove, um, look, can you see this? So I can kind of like keep that bloom, but I can get like that darker intensity back um, from the image. So I'm going to put this around to 0 0.5. So we're almost there. Uh, with this copycat, so I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. The last thing I noticed that we're missing is we've got these kind of stripes, these, these vertical stripes here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab the stripes up. And these are the settings that I came up with. So I'm going to put uh, the number on, say, 170. I'm going to put the width on 0.41, I think it was, yep. And then I'm going to rotate it, so I'm going to put it on 0.25 to make it vertical. Um, and then the color, I'm going to put on 0 0.25, 0 0.19, and 0 0.14. I just want it to be pretty um, dark. So now I'm going to put this on exclusion. As you can see, we get these really heavy lines, but I just want it to be subtle. So I'm just going to pull this down, and I'm just going to crank it up more than I'd normally like. Um, but as you can see, we're now getting this. So let's make the screen a little bit bigger and see what we've got. So this is quite similar to this. It's not exactly the same. That's not the idea with Copycat. We just try and make things that are inspired. So look at that. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Uh, I know it's a lot, and this, this piece took me a long time to figure out because it's generative art. So you're just going to tweak a lot of these numbers until you've got something which you like and kind of like fits, and you go like, yeah, I'm happy with this. So that was this episode of Copycat with Cables. I hope this video has been fun, educational, and informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. And once again, big shout out to Tyler Hobbs. Um, make great artwork, man. And it was really inspiring to try and recreate this inside the cables. Okay, everybody, have a good one. Bye.